So aggression can be active, it can be passive, it can be overt, it can be covert. Here's another distinction that is extremely important to get. It can be reactive, or it can be, as some authors and researchers call it, instrumental or predatory. And boy, are these two forms of aggression different. An example of reactive aggression is an example, I'll never forget this example. This example was first actually given to me by um, a, a wonderful psychologist who has worked as a consultant to penal institutions out in California for many, many years and, um, and uh, investigated a number of cases and uh, uh, he, he gave the example of what a cat does when it is sitting on the porch minding its own business and a bulldog, a pit bull, uh, is rounding the corner and slowly approaching. Its behaviors are very stereotypic. It will arch its back. Its hair will stand on end. It will show its claws. It will hiss. It will do everything to signal its readiness to aggress. And underneath it all, it is really scared. It's really afraid, right? That's the reason it's doing this. It's afraid underneath it all. It shows its willingness to aggress and its readiness to fight. Does it want to fight? No. It's really hoping what? It's really hoping that the pit bull will just go on its merry way and leave it alone and it doesn't have to fight, right? It just wants the threat to go away. It will fight if it has to. It's scared to death, but there's no running room, right? Which is why it signals its readiness to fight. It's part of the basic fight or flight response that all creatures, including us, have. But the last thing it wants to do is fight, and it's primarily scared. It's motivated by fear. This is the nature of reactive aggression. Predatory or instrumental aggression <clears throat> is analogous to the example that this person gave of the cat who spots a mouse in the corner of the room and fancies that mouse for lunch. Its behavior is entirely different. It doesn't make noise, it doesn't hiss doesn't arch its back. As a matter of fact, it's low to the ground. It doesn't broadcast all over the place that it's ready to fight. As a matter of fact, it does its best to conceal any aggressive intent. It doesn't want the mouse to know what's coming, so it's not going to broadcast it, right? And most importantly, most importantly, it's not getting prepared to fight or to aggress or to inflict great harm because it's scared. It's not motivated by fear at all. It's motivated by desire. This is a, I mean, this is a huge concept to get. I can't tell you the number of times that I have done training, especially with professionals, who can't conceive of why a person would aggress unless underneath it they weren't coming from a fearful place. The cat is not fearful of the mouse, and hold on, 
It's not mad at the mouse either. It just wants to have it for lunch. There are certain aspects of the victimization behavior of even humans where neither fear nor anger are the motivating factors, which is why so many of our so-called anger management programs are not actually very well conceived. Because many times the aggressive behavior patterns of the folks in these programs do not have their roots either in fear or anger, but rather the pure will to victimize or to dominate. The whole concept of instrumental or predatory aggression is foreign to most of us, and it's how many victims, unfortunately, become victims because it's so hard for us to conceptualize that. It's so hard to conceptualize that somebody might just do us in for a purely self-serving agenda other than they're pissed at us or they're afraid of us. It's, this is inconceivable. But there is such a thing as predatory aggression and humans are capable of it too. Now, of course, I sometimes get really ridiculous with some of my workshop attendees when I'm talking about some of the other assumptions that we've traditionally made about why people will aggress. And I, I, I allude to the models that, well, you know, it must be that some past experience scarred the person they, they, they wouldn't engage in these repeated acts of victimization of other people unless they had been so victimized themselves in the past uh, and, and traumatized that they felt basically that their best defense was a strong offense. This would be analogous to saying that the only reason that the cat wants to rip the mouse to shreds is because when it was young it had a traumatic experience with a mouse once, right? And got to hating and distrusting all mice, right? Is this not ridiculous? It's so inconceivable to us to think that there could be another mode of aggressive interaction. And the predators among us, they know this. They know that we, and therapists, by the way, think this way, which makes it easy pickings for them to victimize, really easy pickings, because we don't see it coming. <laughs>